Hey everybody, welcome back. This is applying assert objects equal in the testing section of module two, and it's gonna be the last problem in this section of module two. After this, we're gonna move on to skeletons, but that's not really super important for right now. So same idea, uh, most of what's gonna happen is not related to the automated tests. We're gonna be doing most of our work in Replit, and we're mostly going to be thinking about things as opposed to just making sure that the code works. So we've got an assertion we need to make, Add full name property is going to return an object, so we're going to be working with assert objects equal, and then we're going to test it out, and possibly the code that they've written here is incorrect. So we'll copy this, we'll go over here, copy everything and paste it on in. We got our function definition, add full name property to an object, and cool. So assertion functions to be used. If the return value here is an object, which it is, we're going to create an assert objects equal function with an actual object, an expected, actual, an expected object, and a test name. So we're going to say actual is equal to json.stringify of actual. And we're gonna spell actual correctly. And we'll say expected is equal to json.stringify of expected. Two things. Which you probably recognize if you watch the assert objects equal fun uh, function solution video. Uh, this is cheap. This is not necessarily the way that you would compare objects. It's much more about getting used to the idea of testing objects than it is demonstrating how to actually test them. And um, if you want to find out more about that, look up deep object comparison. I think it's like a like a module that'll show you how to do that. But essentially, you need to account for an infinitely nested object, which is to say that rather than an object with having simple scalar values, it has values that are objects and then it kind of keeps going from there. So what we'll do is we'll cheat basically by stringifying both of the objects and then comparing them because the strings are now scalar values and can be compared directly. So if actual is equal to expected, we will get an error because that's not an equal sign. Well, it is an equal sign, but it's an assignment. So actual triple equals expected that's the case, we're going to console.log past. That's a colon. Else console.log failed. And we failed a test name. So we'll need to tell ourselves what that test name is in lowercase. Close the brackets around the test name. Expected plus expected plus, but got, 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 but got, space, actual. Okay, so that's a simple version where we're not doing the double quotes around actual and, and, and expected. So that should work. Now the test cases. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to be given an object. It's going to have a first name and a last name property and we're going to add a last name property to it, which is going to be the first name from the object and the last name from the object with a space in between them. So first thing we'll need is an object that does that. So we'll say input object is equal to an object. It's gonna have a first name, which is, well, we'll just go with mine, David, and a last name, Coleman. And I think that's pretty much it. Yep, and then it's gonna add a full name uh, property to it. So what we'll do is we'll say variable output object is equal to mm -hmm, the result of calling this, which is going to be add full name prop on our input object. Then we're gonna say assert objects equal we're going to write one of these literally, which is to say, oh, no, we won't. We'll say expected object is equal to, and it's going to be this thing right here. Oh, go on then. And it's also going to have a full name property. It's going to be David space Coleman, and there we go. So we're going to check to see if output object and expected object are the same. 
Oh boy, oh boy, back up. Expected object. Mm -hmm. Test name should be, should add full name property to input object. Later, we're going to figure out some other test cases for this in situations where we don't have a proper object. Because if we look at what it looks like they're trying to do on line six, it looks like we need to make sure that the first name and last name are there before we add the property to the object. So, hey, but it doesn't say that in the assert objects equal. It's like, I know. But that's the fun part is that eventually you're going to want to start considering, considering yourself not as somebody who follows recipes solely, but somebody who critiques them and eventually creates their own recipes. So with that in mind, let's think about what we need to do for the rest of this problem. We have one test case that's going to check to see if things work on a very basic level. We have an input object that has the proper pro has the appropriate properties. We have an expected object which has the result of the function working correctly. Now we're calling assert objects equal. So if we hit run, we're probably going to see failed in some kind of stingify is not a function. It sure isn't. So let's go assert objects equal eval machine anonymous 16 at 9. Mm. Script point in context, line 16. Ah, yes. Okay, so 16 stringify. So that should be better. Let's go ahead and run again. Failed. Should add full name property to input object. Expected first name David, last name Coleman. Don't worry about the quotes around the keys. That's just, that's what happens when you stringify them. Uh, last name Coleman, but got first name David, last name Coleman. So it's supposed to have all of this, but it's not adding the property, which is okay. So if that's the case, something's going wrong in add full name property. So okay. So the first thing that looks like they're doing is they're creating two variables, first name. And that's okay, because we knew that there was something wrong with add full name property, because that's what we're up to here. First name is equal to object.first name. I like it. Line four, last name is equal to object at last name. Now, I don't like this. And the reason is that last name is not defined. Last name is going to try to find a variable called this. So we either need to go dot notation here, or if we wanted to go the other way, we could wrap this guy in quotes. Either one of those is going to get the job done. So last name, first name. If first name and last name, object at, first, at full name is equal to first name, which is this one, plus last name, which is that one, and then return the object. So I would proffer, not proffer, what's the word for this? I would claim that we have now solved this problem. And we did. Now, in addition to it working this way, it looks like in the event that the first name or the last name isn't there, they don't want us to connect it. Okay, good. Anyway, in the event that the first name and the last name aren't there, it doesn't look like they want us to add a full name property. So let's go ahead and organize a couple test cases around that. So we'll copy all of this. We'll put one down here. So we'll say test cases, everything working. And the next one is going to be missing first name. Then we'll put another one down here, missing last name. So for missing first name, we want to get rid of the first name property. So if we think about the expected object, should be, well, it shouldn't do anything to it, right? It should just be completely empty. And should not add full name property uh, to input object if first name is missing. And for the missing last name, let's go ahead and get rid of the last name. In this one we're going to need to go get rid of the first name or the last name and the full name. So let's make sure there's no odd commas hanging out. Okay, so the missing first name one should return an object that doesn't have anything changed. And missing the last name should return or should return it just the same way that it was. Again, both of these are not going to do anything to it. And test name for this one should not add full name property to input object if last name is missing. And theoretically, we could do another one where there's just a completely empty object or objects with other values in it or any other kind of thing, but this is pretty much a, a relatively comprehensive test suite at this point. We have a function that's going <clears> to <throat> do something based on what it looks like is two conditions. 
you know, the presence of two conditions, meaning make sure that first name and last name are true val truthy values, which is to say that they're not, you know, zero or an empty string or something like that, or null or undefined will be the case. And then if that is the case, create a new property called full name, which is the result of adding two of the properties together. So we have two additional cases, one where it's missing the first name and one where it's missing the last name, and then one where everything's working correctly. I'm saying everything is working, everything's present. So we'll go ahead and run this one. We get passed for everything. That's good enough for me. Let's go ahead and copy everything and bring it back over. Keeping in mind that the automated tests here are just going to tell us if we wrote an assertion function for assert objects equal. We did. So we'll scroll down here, run the tests, and we're in good shape. Thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see you in the next video.